Well, salutations, kindred spirits. Hey, and welcome back to another weekly Wednesday magic lesson. And in this clip, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at two things. We're gonna take a look at a move and a trick. And I chose this because uh, two reasons. Number one, the trick goes hand in hand with the uh, history lesson I posted Monday. Maybe I can leave a link here to that if you'd like to check out the visitor routine, it's a sandwich trick, and this sandwich trick is one I often use in conjunction with it. Let me go ahead and show you the trick, and then we'll talk about the move, and then we'll come back and talk about the trick. But uh, first, the effect. Two red queens, it could be any sandwich cards, you could use jokers, but we use queens in the visitor, so I'm sticking with that plot. Two red queens go together in the center of the pack, and at this point you have your spectator freely name any card they like. Literally any card in the deck will be fine and we'll just use the Ace of Spades popular card and with the snap of the fingers the magic happens. Did, did you see it? Yeah, when I snapped the card moved in between those two red queens. Any named card jumps in between the two red queens and that happens because when I snap, look, one of the queens jumps to the top of the pack. What? Yeah, one is on the top one is on the face on the bottom, sure. So by inference, there you have it, in between the two red queens, there it is, the ace of, could have been any card, in between the two red. <clears throat> you seem underwhelmed. There's, there's other ways to do that. Here's method, here's method B, where I make the queens vanish from the top and the bottom. Look, they travel into the center of the deck and find one card in between them, and there it is. Your freely named card, the Ace of Spades. And hey, thank you, Roy Walton, for that wonderful trick. That's Roy Walton's Smiling Mule, which can be found in one of Roy's collected works books and other places. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but mainly we're going to talk about today, what we're going to talk about is the pass. In particular, the Herman style shift which is the pass that I use for this effect, yeah. I've had a lot of guys request that I start giving some information on the pass, and we could talk about a lot of passes. We could talk about the riffle pass, or the dribble pass, or maybe a spread shift, but the pass we're talking about today, and we'll maybe get to those in the future, the pass we're talking about today is my, uh, my style of a Herman shift, or a turnover shift, or an invisible pass, or a midnight shift, or a wrist turn pass, this, uh, this pass involves all of those kind of actions, and it also involves a Vernon concept, which is kind of the backbone of this pass. Uh, the Vernon idea that I applied is, he uses it in a palm, he calls topping the deck, and the idea is that you take a pack from maybe an unsquared condition, and as you square it and bring it to the fingertips, you execute the pass. This is something that Aaron Fisher applied to great effect in his half pass. And if you're not familiar with Aaron Fisher and his pass work, well, you'll want to correct that mistake as soon as possible. But uh, here we go. Here's how I apply the Vernon topping the deck, moving the deck to the fingertips with a chest level Herman style wrist turn pass action. Let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is obtain a break. Oh, it's not actually not actually a break. This is almost a breakless pass, but you'll want to attain a, a step at which point you'll uh, uh, execute the pass, an end jog, as they say. There's a couple ways to get this end jog. Uh, uh, quite often you'll get these through an overhand shuffle, back jogging with your thumb. That's optional, but what I'm going to advocate here is a dribble. A dribble, a pause upon which point the pack is squared. Usually I'll have a card replaced at this point, so the action would be, here, put your card back, or hey, just say stop. And uh, at that point, the card is replaced. What do we have here? The Queen of Hearts, that's a good one to focus on, Queen of Hearts. As I dribble these cards onto the packet, I start dribbling backwards, uh, back jogging. I start to dribble back jog as the cards move forward. And then I back jog, I back dribble a little bit, which creates a messy situation, but I have that step ready to go right on the face of the pack. So that's method one to create the step. Method two is maybe you've spread through the pack and you're, you're offering either a selection or the spectator returns their card after the spread. And then as you square the spread, the left fingertips can pull down. They just pull down on the spread so as the spread is squared on the top, your step is formed here. 
Now, I'm gonna give you all an exposed angle of this pass after this, but let me talk about it from the front angle and then we'll approach it from the back. So, uh, the deck is in a, a dealing grip position, four fingers at the front, thumbs on the side, the fingers are along the side. The forefinger will be moving underneath the pack as we begin the pass actions. And that happens as the right hand comes forward to square, and that's the action here. We're squaring the deck. That's why the dribble is good or the spread is good. It gives us a reason to come together with the hands and begin the squaring action. As the squaring happens, the thumb lifts up ever so slightly. I'm talking like a millimeter. And as that happens, the left hand begins to drop slightly. Now the deck will become clipped between the first and second fingertips. The first and second fingertips are going to hold this packet. And as the right hand grasps the upper portion between, I keep the forefinger curled, so it's really the three uh, lower fingers, the ring finger, the birdie, the little finger, and the, top, and the thumb, which moves that top portion of the deck forward and somewhat downward. So the hand starts to move down. And as that happens, the left first and second fingers, uh, the, the front of the deck kisses the packet. It kisses the top half of the packet until it clears it from underneath, at which point the right hand, the forefinger, will grab the uh, left side and begin to swivel, to swivel its portion of the pack square with the lower now portion that's revolved to the upper portion as you square the deck at the fingertips. Wow, that was a lot of words. I hope some of that makes sense, and as I move around to an exposed back view, maybe that will make things even more clearly. But hey, let me just briefly describe this once more. You've, is our queen on the top? Sure is. So you've had your card replaced, the dribble to get the step, the right hand comes to square, lifts up gently as the left hand fingers clip, the first and second fingers the clips the bottom parcel, the right hand moves forward, kissing that uppermost portion of the pack. This is going to block your angles. The angles are pretty good on this as far as passes go. Uh, moving along, the, the right hand does a wrist turn, which brings the packet above, which is now the uppermost packet as we bring everything back to this position and square the deck. That will complete the pass. And at speed, it should look something like this and there's the card to the top that's my application of the herman shift a chess level no break strategy so hey that's that let's take a look at it from the back side okay here we go with a close-up view hopefully this will be helpful uh, again we start the past by dribbling to gain a step position or doing the spread to get your uh, not a break but a step the right hand approaches, the thumb contacts that step as the uh, three fingers grab in a biddle, biddle style grip, the forefinger curls on top. The right hand moves forward as it lifts up the portion above the step moving forward. That's as the left hand, the first and second finger grasp the lower portion, preparing to swivel it below the uppermost portion. That is done as the right hand moves forward slightly. That's when the left hand moves its packet. Again, the, the front of that kissing the face of the, the upper packet. And then once it's underneath, the right hand wrist turns, everything is squared as it's brought to the fingertips. And there's your exposed view at the Herman style shift. That's what it looks like from the left side try and get a view from the front here. Sorry if I'm a little tight. And this is what it looks like from the right. So the angles on this thing are not bad at all, in my opinion. <clears throat> Herman style shift, exposed. Well, hopefully that view is helpful. I'm still working with the camera and learning how to get these shots for you guys. Stick with me. And hey, if you have any questions about the move as we move forward, drop a line in the comments. Let me know what you need help with and I'll try and help as best I can. Hey, let me give you some references for this, this shift as well. Give you some extra info where you can learn the things that I learned through my life. Uh, let's start with the Stars of Magic book. That's where I was initially exposed to the turnover pass or Herman shift. It's done, I think it was published within the Cavorting Aces routine where the red and black aces transpose. It's a great classic, well worth your attention. 
Uh, where else? Uh, Steve Drawn's work on the past. And before talking about Steve, I should probably talk about uh, Ed Marlowe, who has a ton of work on all the passes. But in particular, I draw your attention to his wrist turn, wrist turn passes, which were published in the New Tops. Uh, those are probably most readily available in the Mint books. Marlowe in New Tops, Mint, Volume 1 has his wrist turn pass. And then we'll look at Steve Drawn, who's uh, Steve Drawn's Midnight Shift. That was very inspirational as well in developing uh, the things you see here. So one more, let me talk one more. Alex Pandrea, yeah, Alex Pandrea, he's a YouTube guy that has published extensive tutorials. His work on the turnover shift is freaking invisible. It's excellent. And uh, yeah, search Alex and check out his password. It's fantastic. So there you go. Uh, front view, a back view, some extra clips. Hopefully all those together will give you the knowledge you need to figure out a pass that works for you. And uh, know this, everyone's pass is gonna be different. That's why there's so many. Everyone has a different hand size. My thumb is huge, which leads me to do different things than you might do. Some people won't like the forefinger curled. You wanna keep it here. Maybe you're gonna go for that deep grip for a better, better uh, uh, camouflage. Lots of choices to be made, and I'm just offering some choices for you to make here. So good luck with that. That's the pass. The Herman style shift as performed by yours truly. Now let's talk about that card trick I did to open the, the segment. It's uh, Roy Walton's Smiling Mule, one of the great card tricks of all time. It's a wonderful impromptu trick, and it's a great uh, way to find a freely named card. Here's how you do that. Begin the effect with your sandwich cards, the jokers or the queens. Place them face up together in the middle of the pack. So demonstrate that clearly. Prepare to obtain a break in this spot between the red queens. So here we're in a spread condition as I square the pack up. As I mentioned before, I just down jog that uh, lowermost queen slightly. So I have the step to form my break as I execute the pass. In this uh, situation, I'm turning the deck face down to the table. So I do that Herman style shift invisibly as I turn the deck over to the table. I do this as I ask a spectator the question. Anytime you can avert your spectator's gaze while you're doing the uh, secret moves is you know, uh, advantageous and asking a question is one of the best ways to do that. So, hey Bob, would you please name any card in the deck? And that's when you execute the pass as you're addressing your spectator. So now you have a red queen on the top, a red queen on the bottom. Your spectator names any card. You do your hocus pocus, tippy tap, snap snap, whatever you do. And now the blow, the blow off. You say, yeah, your card is now in between the queens. Because when I did my magic, look, one of the queens jumped to the top. One of the queens jumped to the face, which means your card, the ace of spades, whatever they name, is in between the queens and now you want to create the inference that that's the trick your card is in between the queens yep there it is now relax your attention that will drop their attention as well everyone gets a little chuckle and it's at that moment that you secretly call their card underneath the spread so they've named their card you show the queen on the top you show the queen on the bottom spread through the deck and when you see their card Put your thumb on the card to the right of it, and then use your left thumb to, on the card to the right of it. Then use your right fingers to pull that card under the spread. This is an under the spread call, which deserves a lot more attention than I'm giving it here, but maybe we'll talk about this more in detail one day. Thumb on top, fingers below, pull it to the right. That allows you to ride the card under the spread to the bottom of the deck. So now our position is this. We have a red queen on the top of the face of the deck, a red queen on the bottom, and below that we have culled the freely named card under the misdirection of the joke. All that's left is to bring the trick to a successful finish. You can do another uh, turnover pass if you'd like, and go like a, a turnover pass in this situation would, would play like this. No, there's two ways to do it here. I'll send the queens back to the middle. So now there's a little more drama built and I just execute the turnover pass again as I place it to the table. That'll bring the freely named card between the queens. Or I'll, I'll often do it in a visual fashion with the Herman style shift. So after I've get, got my card called underneath the lowermost queen, that face up queen, as I square the pack in this position, 
I'll execute the shift and create the inference that a visual vanish has occurred. And now you can spread the pack and in between those two queens is the freely named card. Thank you, Roy Walton, for that wonderful card trick. Smiling the mule. Well, there we go. That's your lesson for today. It's a lot to chew on there. The Herman shift with the Vernon topping the deck action. And uh, you got some spread things to work on to get your, uh, you know, steps. And uh, the, the coal, you can practice that. And as I said, if you need help with any of it, just drop me a line in the comments. And that's going to complete our weekly, weekly Wednesday magic lesson for today. Hope you learned something.